Hello and welcome to Wessex Blades. Big step forward, so I want to share with you what I've got and what I can now achieve and the journey that's been over the last decade um, dealing with a process um, in order to do something within the making of a knife. Um, now, your maker's mark. Uh, you would need a way of making an indelible, permanent, way of marking your character, your company name on a blade in steel um, and most of the time it's electrochemically etched so you would need um, a stencil some description and then you're using one of these foam pads with electrolytic solution you got a stopwatch because you've used it over the years and worked out how deep you want to cut it first. Um, that would be DC, so you've got a diode in there, which is this thing here, so the current's DC, and then you've got to take that off, or what I would do to save time would be that's connected to the blade. I then just do that because it's after the diode. So we'll have to disconnect this. We just do it DC, then AC, saves time. So DC cuts down into the steel. The AC afterwards zzz, zzz, makes it black. Now you've got a contrast in maker's mark. Um, to get hold of the stencil, years gone by, I'd use Ostlin, Ostlin edge mark. Those stencils, resilient though they were, were like £60 each. Now it gave me a maker's mark, but if I wanted to put a a model mark, logo, moniker, on one of my many models, I'd have needed to get the artwork done, send it to them, and it was a very old school way of working, it was like sending invoices and stuff, it's very hard going. Um, I mean, over the years I've bought two of those things and a hundred and something pound put into two of these little blue stencils. Now the advantage of using an Ostlin Etchmark stencil was because it was on a sort of woven sheet. I could do my maker's mark in the shape of the, the helmet. So I could get that done. There wasn't a stencil feel to it. You could have lines and, and areas within lines and writing and things. So it was very accurate because you weren't you didn't actually have a gap in the stencil. You just had a back in and then a resistive layer. So you still had the back in keeping it all together. When I transitioned to using vinyl stencils uh, greatly done by JP there. Now, you can understand as a stencil, if I peel it off and there was a free floating black spot in something, I'd have needed to use transfer tape to take the whole thing off to put the whole thing back on again. It, it was limited in, in a way. The other problem I always had was the masking up of it and the solution and you're getting little bits of undercutting hand finishing would sort that out uh, and, and then as you finally finish the blade occasionally you might catch a little bit of black and lose it so it was a way of doing it I wanted it defined dark but I was never happy with the way it was done I'd always wanted it lasered now, when the school got a laser, it was disappointing to find out that even though it was a 40 watt car, uh, CO2 laser and an enormous glass tube at the back, vacuum tube, and this thing was cutting out 6 mil ply like no one's business, it couldn't make a spot on metal. It simply couldn't do it. 
baffling. And then the research started. Um, and what you were able to do was some low powered lasers could make marks on the steel. And what you'd have to do is buy this aerosol can called Surmark. And inside there were varying things, including molybdenum. And that would create a sort of black, um, vapor induced coating as the laser went through it would affect it and it would leave an indelible mark behind and then you'd take the, the, the residual spray because you'd have to spray the whole knife sort of like if you were going to do that area you'd make it black there laser it and then you clean it off and you'd leave the laser on the spray would stay it's great sir mark is 50 60 pound, pound a can so you've already bought the laser and now you're faffing about with this and you're still faffing about cleaning it off but it was a way of doing it okay and I'm looking at that and there were a few videos out there where if you use heat resistant molybdenum spray okay it's got molybdenum in it you'd still get quite a defined look so at least the, that sort of direction you could use a, a decent laser that's achievable financially to a small company like what I've got well company Soul Trader right and you'd have a laser that could do an accurate mark where you wanted it because you use it on the software get it where you want it spray this thing on and you could get your mark done and you wash it off so you wouldn't have problems with the undercutting of the, the acid. You do it in one step, and once you press go, I can get on with stitching whilst it's working. Okay. Eventually, what I did was, I bought myself a small laser and was doing the vinyl decals myself. So that worked in a way by doing my own vinyls but the problem is if you've ever set fire to a dinghy <laughs> the smell was unbelievable um, so PVC there's hydrochloric noxious fumes goes right through the house um, I'd have a fan on I'm trying to I'm doing it I can't work in here whilst that's running I need to be in here with the USB cables because it was two USBs in there so that's where it had to go I'm not hooking this anywhere else so I couldn't get on my lever work really at the same time so I was setting it and run it and then maybe do a bit of filming out so I want to set it run and go so I was looking to get a better laser and biting the bullet with this Suramark spray rationale of you spray the blade, you laser the damn thing on, and then you gotta wash it off. Okay, but it's done. And, it's, and then I was looking at the health and safety sh sheets on the molybdenum spray and the Surmark, and they got some pretty nasty stuff as well. So I'm back to noxious fumes. Can I really repeatedly over the next few years use this process with something that's creating noxious fumes and I'm trying to work whilst it's working Ugh. okay with all this searching I arrived at the type of laser gantry that I was after and that wasn't an enclosed boxed laser because you're restricted to what you can put in there and shut the lid I need something that is only really for the odd bit of cutting but it's mostly for engraving I don't need a big box I want a gantry it's got two arms and a moving head without the other side so it can lift up and place down on whatever it is I'm cutting now I could cut out small lever shapes if it cut lever if it didn't, it didn't at least I could mark out map out small something like imagine I was doing prototyping something like that as a prototype 
press and run, press and run, press and run. Like start batch production on little things like that. I could do laser decals on that. I could mark where the holes would be. I wouldn't need uh, pricking irons. I could just that's where they are, and then use things to put holes through that would match up the other side because I'd split and fold the software. Do you understand? It would absolutely be in the right place. So I want a laser that's got two arms, the back rail, and that. So I could put it on anything. Because I'd done all the searching, eventually you come across something and they're called woodpeckers. And they're more of a sort of block with an arm and the laser actually starts doing this. As opposed to the head moving. That can laser, mark, etch, direct to the steel. Two grand. Not going there, not going there. Then we saw one that Ben offered at. Looked like that sort of woodpecker sort of design. And he was marking it up to it. On his computer, press and go. Ah, really clear, really defined. But still hoping eventually to invest in one of these lasers and then it's like biting the bullet on the Ceramark spray. Because I don't want to search in, YouTube sent, sent through suggested videos, been up 10 minutes. This, Adam Stack, 41 P7 with compression spot technology. To my brain, you got a rubbish magnifying glass. You can't burn through the bin liner. You get a really good magnifying glass. Now you can burn with the sun through a bin liner. Well, I watched the video. It's cutting eight millimeter ply, 15 passes or something. Like I, my brain, I can understand that on the software, you do how many times you want it to do the same spot. You don't move it, you leave it where it is, you press run, you're working, you know it takes eight, 10, where many passes, and you put an eight pass it, and it just goes back and does it again. You're getting on with stuff whilst it's getting on with stuff. Okay. And then I thought, well, I'll be quicker on the vinyl. I could, I could work out maybe having a shower extract or something just to suck away the fumes, and then the damn thing was showing, marking direct on stainless steel. I'm going, it can't be, can't be, sure. Surely they're using the spray, you know, the Surmark spray. No, I said direct. I said direct again, oh, I'm scratching my head, surely. It says mirror stainless. Surely it's got a bit of a satin look to it, so it's got slightly uneven, you know, sort of striated sort of appearance. No, it says mirror. How is it doing that? Why isn't it shining and bouncing straight up like a mirror? So I emailed the actual company and I said, will it mark stainless steel, carbon steel? The message back was quite funny. Have you ever seen uh, is it Demolition Man? We have ultimate trust confidence in this product to do said task. Ultimate trust confidence. Be well. So anyway, looked on Banggood, it's on offer, you can get it interest free credit over a couple of months. I haven't seen anybody use one, I haven't really got any ideas about it, I took a plunge. And it bloody well does it. It does it. I've had a few trials already. It does it. So, Amstack P7. Let you go, let you all know about it. No more stinky vinyl. I can expand and detract whichever size it is. I can jig it up, 
get it all straight, square. And it has cost, it hasn't cost me £2,000. I'm only one payment in. So the next batch I do, it should start paying for itself in just sheer ease of work, press, run, I can sit and do stitching. I can have the computer running in the background editing a video. I could have the tumbler running in the get whilst this working, I'm working. So I hope you understand the sort of step forward that that's been for Wessex Blades. Huge thanks to Patreon for all your support. Okay, the video will be up on Patreon first and then released in general. Um, this is a game changer. This means that anybody with a minimal investment can get something to mark your blades. You could have a design, a small design, and prototype stuff and target your drill holes. Does that make sense? You haven't got to blue it. You just go around the outside. You might be able to mark your lever out for small prototypes around the outside and then cut to your mark. You can obviously engrave your lever. So if you kept your lever undyed and you just treated it afterwards, you could have a really defined image on there. You could bullseye some holes, like where you're going to target and put your pricking irons through. And because it folds up, they bang on the other side. Wow. It's got Wessex Blades out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying, staying the course. It's a big like. And uh, some more trials. Damn thing works. It's all trials, it's all speeds, feeds, powers, um, how many passes per millimeter, all of that to learn. I've got a new software called Laser Gerbil uh, version 4.6 uh, to work out which comet was recognizing itself at, uh, what board, and what they, there's loads of stuff to learn. Uh, but the software is a free download. Um, and then once you connect it all up, you literally turn it on, connect it. If anybody's using one of these up here, you, 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 the whole software thing, you just get used to the software on that machine. Um, but it's been able to do that round circle medallion with the writing and the thin lined logo that couldn't be done on a vinyl. Um, stencil, stencil, because you needed, you know, when you do an A, there's a little little bar there to hold the block in the middle of the A. And what, there's those little things that um, just took away the accuracy of the logo that was historically Wessex Blades. Um, so, I'm going to have a trial of this, see how it works out. If it wasn't quite as um, defined, it'd be a second pass but the transit time and the power and all of that seems to be working so far. So we'll see how it goes in a minute.